The Global Innovation Index celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, and its theme is Feeding the World with Innovation. One of the authors of the report, Bruno Lanvin, Executive Director of Global Indices at INSEAD, joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Bruno. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Um, who leads the GII rankings this year? Indeed, we have still stability at the top in the GII in 2017. We have Switzerland solidly established as number one again, followed by Sweden, the Netherlands, uh, the US and the UK. Um, in uh, the top 10, we have relatively uh, limited moves, except for Netherlands moving up six ranks, which is exceptional, but largely due to compensation for the drop of five ranks they had last year for technical reasons. Uh, in the top uh, 20, we have all the significant moves like France plus three, Israel uh, plus four. Uh, but apart from that, uh, again, the champions remain the, uh, the champions. One noticeable uh, fact we saw in uh, GII last year was uh, China breaking into the top 25. This trend has continued and China again uh, gains three ranks this year, moves the, moving up to 22. Last year's GII sounded an alarm bell on low growth in the global economy. This year we have some good news, as it seems there is more growth momentum. How can innovation capitalize on the small upswing of economic growth? Indeed, the last quarter of 2016 gave us some figures that raised hope about the resumption of economic growth globally. However, there are also threats. Um, clearly, there's a lower momentum in terms of economic integration, as we saw with Brexit in the European Union. There's a renewed tendency for protectionist and nationalistic policies in different parts of the, the world, including the US. All this uh, could actually water down the, the hopes uh, that have started to grow about resumption of growth. Last year, uh, we raised the flag above uh, public investment in R&D, showing that it was on a downward, downward trend. This year, it's quite disconcerting to see that private spending on R&D has also be dim been diminishing. Uh, it is urgent for both governments and private businesses to consider that if indeed they want to leverage these early signals of growth, investment in R&D and further innovation would be important. How is innovation impacting agricultural productivity? It is estimated uh, today that about 795 million people suffer from hunger. Uh, it's a dramatic figure. It means one human being out of nine still doesn't have enough uh, to eat. Um, the paradox in that situation is that it's not due to our lack of production. There is enough food for everybody but it's the way in which it is distributed around the world that creates the problem we have to face. And this problem will not go away, and innovation will be a major part of the solution. That innovation is already translating at the level of productivity in producing more crops, higher varieties, uh, better calorie uh, components, uh, and the use of technologies such as those of drones, remote sensing, uh, genetic engineering are well known they now need to be combined with the uh, imperative to protect the planet, to safeguard the environment, and that's a difficult equation uh, that is posed to innovators worldwide. At the same time, uh, it should be understood that uh, technological innovation by itself will not solve the problem. There are all sorts of innovation that have to do with the uh, value chain in agriculture and food distribution, international trade, that should play a major role in solving the pending food crisis. Is there a divide this year that is being flagged in the report? This year's report highlights a new kind of divide, which uh, is quite surprising. Uh, what we see is that the gap between the higher income countries on one hand and the middle income countries like China, Malaysia, Bulgaria, uh, that gap is diminishing. What is more surprising is that the divide between the top 10 and countries rank 11 to 25, that gap is increasing. In other words, the cream of the cream, uh, the real champions, are uh, striving ahead. Uh, and there are different reasons to that why this is happening. Uh, one of them is that innovation 
is less and less purely technological of the kind you can acquire, patent, trademark, and more and more business model oriented. It has more to do with organization, with soft skills, with talent, with the ability for startups to uh, be created rapidly and deliver to, to the market. And that's something that may be more difficult to emulate by the second tier compared to what the first tier has done. What are the important lessons of this year's GII? This year's report highlights five key messages. Number one, as I mentioned before, uh, we need a lower level of uncertainty in the world economy for growth to resume, resume in a sustainable fashion. Uh, number two, regarding the food crisis, uh, it's a major issue in which innovation has a key role to play, uh, even if all the factors such as maintaining a large degree of openness in the world economy are equally important. Uh, third message, uh, differences need to be reduced between the cream of the cream, the top of the rankings of GII, and the upcomers that include China and other uh, per high performers among middle-income countries. Uh, the next message is about the rising stars. We've seen different parts of the world, high, highly performing countries in terms of innovation. In Asia, they are the new dragons around Singapore. They include, uh, they include Singapore itself, of course, but also Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, possibly Indonesia, and that dynamism needs to be leveraged. And last but not least, Sub-Saharan Africa still needs a lot of support. Uh, they need better institutions, they need better financing mechanisms, and this uh, is particularly important with regard to the, uh, the food crisis, which is at the core of this year's report. A key reason why we chose this theme of uh, feeding the world with innovation for this 10th anniversary edition of the GII is that we wanted to show that innovation is ju not just for high-tech sectors, for startups. Uh, there is also some fundamental human activities, and agriculture is the most ancient of them, uh, that need to be uh, considered as areas for innovation. And indeed, there are some massive challenges that can only be solved through innovation. Thanks so much for joining us, Bruno. Thank you.